Moderna made it official, asking the FDA for emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine for kids under six. For those families anxious to inoculate their little ones, the news has them breathing a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, others remain skeptical. Here to talk more about this is Dr. Paul Offit. He's a pediatrician and the director of the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us this morning. So let's talk about the efficacy of Moderna's two-dose vaccine regimen for children under six. It does seem fairly low. Why is that? The reason that it's fairly low is that the vaccines, all the vaccines that we use, Moderna's vaccine, Pfizer's vaccine, J&J's vaccines, were made to protect against that original strain, the strain that left Wuhan, basically, the so-called ancestral strain. And, and they protect very well against both mild and, and moderate and severe disease for that, that virus, as well as for the, the first variant that came into this country, which didn't have a Greek letter. It was called D614G, and it was also protective against uh, uh, alpha variant and the delta variant. The problem was Omicron. When Omicron came into this country, it's not that it was more contagious, it, it was it was a more immune evasive. So even if you were fully vaccinated, you still could develop mild illness. Even though you were protected against severe illness, you weren't as well protected against mild illness. And this study of Moderna looked at mild illness because for the most part, children don't get serious illness, they get uh, more mild illness. And so that's what you saw. For the less than two-year-old, protective efficacy was around 51%. For the, for the two-year-old to six-year-old, it was around 37% against mild disease. What you really would like to know is how protective was it against severe disease, which you'll probably only learn after the vaccine is given to millions of children. So, doctor, I want to ask you about like the approval process, right? Because I think that that's, uh, parents want to know that it's, it's very, very thorough, perhaps more thorough than it was for adults. The FDA's advisory panel was set to meet in May to review Moderna's data for kids under six. Now that meeting's been pushed to June. A part of me feels like Moderna sort of released this press release because they wanted to be associated with the vaccine very early on. But, you know, the FDA is still looking for data. So I'm asking you, is this like how the process typically works? Um, d does a company provide data and then, you know, the FDA says, you got to give us more and just sort of walk us through how if this is a typical way this works. So the way it typically works is that, that the company submits a request, in this case, for permission through emergency use authorization. It's usually 100 pages, 150 page document. The FDA then looks at all the primary data. They don't just look at the document that is submitted by the country. They want to make sure that nothing's omitted or worse, that anything is misrepresented. So they look at all those, those, those data, including every single case file for the 6,700 case children, for example, who were in the Moderna study. Then they form their, they write their own document. Again, 100 to 150 page document. Then those two documents are sent to us, the members of the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee, to review usually about a week in advance of the meeting. Uh, we, we had meetings scheduled for May. Now the first meeting we're scheduled, uh, we have scheduled for June. But again, we don't know what we're going to be talking about. We could be talking about the third dose for the 5 to 11-year-old. We could be talking about Novavax. We could be talking about uh, children, vaccines for children less than six. We usually don't find that out till about two weeks before the meeting. But it doesn't look like we're going to be meeting on this until June. So just for a little bit of clarification, you mentioned that the only way we're really going to know how effective this vaccine is, is when, you know, millions of kids have access to it, which is pretty much the same way it worked for the adults. It was an emergency use authorization. They were able to, you know, get enough data to know it's, it's safe enough. Let's get it out there mm -hmm. to people's arms because this virus is dangerous. Um, so is it really the same process for the, for the littlest kids or are there extra precautions, take, precautions taken? It's the same process. I mean, you, number one, you want to make sure the vaccine is safe. I mean, when you looked, for example, at the Moderna or Pfizer data in December of 2020, 2020 those were 30,000 person studies, 40,000 person studies. When you start to go to younger age groups, the 12 to 15 year old, the 5 to 11 year old, the 5 to 11 year old, for example, was a 2400 child study. You knew the vaccine was 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 effective against um uh, even mild disease because that study was done when Delta was still predominant. When the vaccine got out there then, and it's now 10 million children between 5 and 11 years of age, what you've learned is that the vaccine is highly effective against serious disease, but less effective against mild disease. And I think that's probably what you're going to find out here as well. You know, you, you, you never know everything. Um, you definitely learn as you go. But I think you can feel comfortable that we're starting with so much information as we go from the older age groups down to sort of middle age groups and then younger age groups that I think um, we would never approve this vaccine as committee, committee members unless we would be willing to give it to our own children. Hmm. 
All right, so your message essentially to families with children under six uh, is that uh, this is a safe thing to do. And ultimately, uh, it's an important uh, uh, vaccine to have because it protects the children, it protects the people that they interact with. Well, here's what I would say. I would say, I, I wouldn't say that yet. Okay. I would say, let us look at the data. I mean, I'm looking at the same data you are looking at, which is a press release. I think as soon as we get all the information, that 200 pages of information, and can carefully go look at every piece of that information, and then we will make a recommendation, and the FDA will accept or not accept that recommendation. But I would say nothing right now until we really go through this process in full. And so, again, so, so doctor, just to, be, just to clarify, because right. I think it's an important point that you're making, right? Um, and it's one that parents will have to consider. So uh, just in the same way that you want to wait uh, until all of the data is made available, uh, parents may feel the same. They may say, well, look, even a doctor says he's not 100% sure or confident just yet. So I'm going to hold off until I have more information. You think that's a prudent course of action? Sure. Well, the vaccine's not available yet for the less than six-year-olds. So yes, and I, they, they, I think one should, should, we should all be skeptics. I can tell yeah. you that everybody who sits around that FDA vaccine advisory committee table is a skeptic. Show me the data. Once you've seen the data and you're comfortable with the data, then you move forward. Important, important to know. All Thank right. you, Dr. Paul Offit. Uh, by the way, I'm going to sort of a plug for Philadelphia Children's Hospital because, unfortunately, we had to stay there with my daughter mm. uh, several years ago over Christmas holiday of all the time. And you guys do an excellent, excellent job at not just taking care of the patient, but the family, too. And I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>